sweet hour of prayer. Uh, as uh, we were putting this series together, um, uh, reset, we put in there, reset our prayer. And it's for the church and for us as Christians, sometimes we have to reset our prayer because there's so many things that are in our, in our lives that are getting in the way of us actually focusing and talking, talking to God. Uh, you know, throughout our week, we get challenged by many things. And this morning, I'll mention some of those challenges in our walk and ask that the church pray for them. Uh, this morning, uh, I get challenged to even talk about prayer because there's so many things that I do in a week that I just need to get down and talk to God and, and pray. Some of the things that we talked about in the first series, prayer, will be mentioned here in this second series. But this morning, as we look at the book of Acts in the first chapter, verse 13 through 14, it speaks of the unity of us getting together and praying for our church and for one another. Uh, there's probably no one in this room can say, I don't go through so many trials in a week. Uh, we all do. We get challenged every week. And we need to go to God with those challenges and ask God to, to guide us in our walk with Christ. So Acts chapter 1, verse 13 through 14 if you want to stand for the reading of God's Word, you're more than welcome. But if you don't feel that you can, then uh, it's fine as well. Acts chapter 1, verse 13 through four and 14. The Bible says, When they arrived, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simeon, the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were continually united in prayer, along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Let's pray. Father, I just ask that you would challenge us today, that you would impact our lives, that your Holy Spirit work on us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. See, that wasn't hard after all, right? Amen. Dr. L. R. Scarborough, in his book, With Christ After the Lost, said, Prayer is the Christian's most glorious privilege, privilege, most enlarging opportunity, and most essential obligation, for it opens the door to communication with God, makes easier his access to men, and is the surest way to bring God and men together in a saving, keeping relationship. The prayers of Abraham Jacob, Moses, Nehemiah, and Daniel mark turning points in, in history of, of nations. The kingdom of heaven swings on a pivot of Christ and Paul's prayers. Jesus, the Son of God, and Paul, his greatest apostle, had well-developed prayer habits. They allowed no intrusions into their prayer life and no substitutions. Prayer was was as essential to their spiritual ongoing as food to their physical well-being. It has been said that prayer is the very heartbeat and the very life of the church. Someone once said, the devil trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees praying. Church, this morning, when we reset, we should do a few things. And that first thing is, pray about everything. Pray about everything. In Philippians 4, verse 6, the Bible says, Be anxious of nothing. Relax. we got to pray about everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. So we go to God and pray. And we got to request to the Lord our greatest challenges in our life and our daily walk with Jesus and in this troubled world. A greatly used of God Christian counselor said, the first question he asked those who come to, to him with problem is, have you prayed about it? Many of us here have problems. The question is, have we really prayed about them? You see, we can take all our needs and problems and worries and fears, and yes, all our decisions to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says in Hebrews 
Uh, chapter 4, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, the Bible says, Casting all your care upon him, for he, he cares for you. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the, Bi- the Bible says, Come to me. God's saying, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Every move we make in life, we can talk to God about them. Many Christians today stumble. Uh, they give up uh, and turn to beggarly elements of this world and, and when trouble comes their way. We don't have to rely on the crutches of this world when life tumbles in on us or begins to fall apart. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought, always ought to pray and not lose heart. We ought to pray and not lose heart. In Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, I awaited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and has set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. In Psalms chapter 61, verse 2, the Bible says, From the end of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than than I. You know, now just when we pray, we really can trust God. We need to pray and go with our petitions to God. And now here's why I'm telling you this. In ministry, I've been challenged throughout the week. Last week, I had my highs and lows. The week before, I had my highs and lows. Uh, Being challenged uh, in ministry for me hurts. Because, you know, I may have been one of the Thunder Brothers, but when trouble comes, I say, God, let lightning strike right now on that person. But, I, you know, that's just how some of us pray. But in ministry, we go through our highs and lows. For an example, my low was when uh, going through, uh, we did basketball tryouts. My low was when we picked new kids to travel with us in basketball, and our old kids who came through the program were left behind. It's a low for me. Why? Because my heart goes out to everyone. And the lowest part is, I don't want to let them go. And that's just my heart. In the midst of the trouble, uh, so many people have, have rose up and said, you know, things that hurt. Uh, my son Josh was one of those who were in that, uh, that, that so many people have said things that, that hurt me as a parent to hear what they would say. But when I talked to Josh, and I hate using his name because Josue knows, Josh said one thing to me and Nancy. It's a one-liner. He said, Dad, if Jesus Christ forgave me, I can forgive those. I wanted to get in the car and take off and woof, go to the next town and say, oh my, did he, we, I learned a lesson from my son, that he set it straight. But in the midst of our forgiveness, we need to pray and ask God to forgive those. Lord, uh, forgive those who rise up against us. Why? Because we've been there before, and, and when we go through our troubles in life, we shouldn't go to people. We can go to God. God wants to hear our voice every day and every night, and He wants to hear our problems. He already knows them, even before they happen, but He wants to hear us. And as we go to God, God begins to uh, impact and he begins to work, and our prayers begin to be answered. Now, just even that, I had a high. Not on drugs or any of that. I had a high last, last week. Someone from my past called me and forgave me, and I forgave them. That was exciting. That's exciting. To, for me, even me and myself, I wanted to run down the street and tell everybody. I think I went to George's uh, uh, breakfast thing and I was excited and I told the men to go to that because forgiveness is huge. But when we pray for those who we've 
run into in our lives, God begins to work on our lives and our hearts. Church, this morning, there have been many churches which found themselves in serious trouble, such as uh, financial problems, internal strife, they can't grow. The devil is fighting them on every side. They try to figure out a solution to all of their problems and difficulties. Here's our solution. Why not call a prayer meeting? Ask God for help. Robert Law said, Prayer is, is a mighty instrument, not for getting man's will done in heaven, but for getting God's will done on earth. Amen? When we go to God and pray, God hears our prayers. And yeah, He may not answer all of those, but He hears our prayers. Second, we need to reset our time and uh, time we spend in prayer. First uh, Thessalonians chapter five verse seventeen, the Bible says, "Pray without ceasing." You may be saying, "Pastor, if I'm going to pray without ceasing, nothing's going to get done." Well, I'm not talking about uh, being on your knees without ceasing. I'm talking about we can pray while we're at work. We can pray while we go for walks. While we sit down on breaks during our lunch breaks or throughout the day or wherever we are, wherever we, whatever we are doing throughout the day, we can always pray. That's praying without ceasing, continually uh, talking to God. Uh, even though we do some work in the midst of everything, we can say, God, you know, I, I just I just don't understand this. And you go to the Lord in prayer, talking to God. There should be times when we get alone with God as Jacob, as did Jacob, and wrestle it out with God. We need to wrestle away the things that hinder us from talking to God. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 through 24, uh, the Bible says, And he arose that night and took his two wives and his, and his two female servants and his eleven sons, and they crossed over to Ford Jacob, Jacob, and he, he took to them, he took them, sent them over to Brook, and sent over what he had, what he had, what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. A man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Sometimes we have to wrestle with God because we don't want to let go of grudges. We want things to go our way. We allow things to interfere in our prayer life and our prayer walk. We really need to stop wrestling with God and realize that God has a greater plan for our lives. Now, I'm not alone in this because sometimes like, God, oh, why? Oh, why, God? Oh, why? Why aren't you answering this? We wrestle with God. And we find ourselves on the other end saying, Lord, forgive him. Forgive me. There are times when a brief prayer reaches heaven and it just seems that God says, here I am, what do you want? We begin to think, man, some people say, is the big man upstairs, is he listening? Is he hearing our prayers? And we become impatient and we begin to act on our own and then we say, well, God told us to do this. But we have to be patient and wait on the Lord because God answers prayer. And God answers, I have four, four God, God's four answers to prayer would be this. Before we get there, in talking with people who are concerned because God doesn't seem to be answering their prayers, Pastor Bill Hybels used a little outline he borrowed from a pastor friend of his. Ready? Here it is. A. If the request is wrong, God says no. B, if the timing is wrong, God says slow. C, if you're wrong, God says grow. But if the request is right and the timing is right and you're right, God says it's a go. God answers prayer in his timing. And we ought to be patient with that. Yeah, we want God to answer prayers uh, right now. Some of you are praying, Pastor 60, we want you to hurry up because I want coffee. God says about 20 more minutes, you'll be ready. No. (laughs) Amen. 
But we want God to answer prayers, and what we need to do is be a little bit more patient, and God will answer those prayers in His timing. God always does things in His timing, not in our timing. And some of us may be screaming, hurry up, God! But God says, slow down, kid. I'll get there. Third, the third point of the day is reset and pray for others. The churches today or the church really needs to uh, get into corporate prayer and pray for others. And we need to get together and pray for, A, the sick and hurting. James chapter 5, verse uh, 14 and 15, the Bible says, Any Is anyone among you sick? Let him call to the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. We need to pray for the sick and the hurting. B, we need to pray for the lost and backslidden Christians. Romans chapter 10, verse 1, it says, the Bible says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel, and, and it, Israel is that they may be saved. Now, we, we just hearing that, it's talking about Israel, but we can pray for backslidden brothers and sisters who have walked away because they're hurt by what someone has said. And we can pray for those that are lost. And we need to get together in corporate prayer and pray together in unity. C, pray pray for our enemies. Oh, this is the hardest part in life right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. This is the hardest one of all of them. We really need to pray for those who hate us. And in this world, there are so many people who hate Christians just because who we stand for, and we stand for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And we need to pray for them. No matter what. D would be pray for our country and those in authority. This is another hard one. In 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in, who are in authority, so that they may lead in a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. We need to pray for those in authority. We need to pray for uh, those in authority for, in our country. We may not agree with everything they say, but it doesn't mean we cannot pray for them. We ought to pray for me, Pastor Sixtu, and ministers. We ought to pray for the ministers here as those who minister uh, even in Sunday school or even those that are hosting Bible studies in their homes. We ought to pray for missionaries. We ought to pray for evangelists. We ought to pray for pastors and leaders in second Thess- Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 the bible says finally brothers pray for us that the lord's message may spread rapidly and be honored just as it w- as it was with you pray for us we don't have it all together sometimes as a, a sunday school teacher i know cuz i've been there sometimes we are like <sighs> give Sunday school today. Lord, help me. Well, we ought to pray for them. That God would guide their, their, their minds and their hearts and they would be excited to, to uh, give Sunday school. And some of us are challenged even giving Sunday school. There's some DVDs and, and videos that we show and then we have to follow up with those. Those are challenging too. We come out, we go in as students and we come out as theologians. So, hey, there's, there's some good to that. But pray for those that teach those the studies. Uh, F, pray for revival in America. Revival in America so that we can impact our world or our community or our country for Jesus Christ and people can come to a true repentance and really turn to God and follow Christ. We need to pray, G, Pray for our sports ministries that we have here locally. Pray for FCA. Pray for uh, the bridge. Pray for our family. 
and families. We need to get together and pray for them. And, and the Bible teaches that we ought to pray for them persistently. In Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 7, the Bible says, Keep knocking. That means keep praying. And it goes, and, and it will be given to you. God's going to answer those prayers. Keep searching. You got to keep searching. God, I need your help. And you will find it. Keep knocking and the door will be open to you. God will open doors in your community, in our community. Seek, knock. Ask, seek, and knock are all three commands are also accompanied by a response from God. So God will answer. In the midst of our circumstances, we must pray in faith because no matter what we are doing or going through in our life, God will bring clarity to our lives. We just need to have faith that God will answer. In James chapter 1, verse 5 through 6, the Bible says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom... He should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for a doubter is like a a surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. We need to ask in faith. Pastor Sixtu once said, in basketball, he once said, it's the easiest shot to take is always the hardest shot to make. So in, and I, I threw that out there because I thought I had some wisdom and knowledge and, you know, I just thought it was great. But it's the easiest shot to take is always the hardest one to make. For us in basketball, it would be the free throw shot. We look at it and we're like, oh, this is perfect. I got the, the greatest shot. So we go up, we shoot the first one, we miss. Well, that was embarrassing. I, I did an air ball. It's sort of like prayer. Prayer is the easiest thing we have to take but it's the hardest to make. We have total access to God in prayer, but it's hard for us to make time for God in prayer. And we need to transform and change that part of our lives and really go to God in prayer. Because I believe that God answers prayer in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the struggle. God answers prayer when we're down in the pit. God answers prayer when, when, we're, when we're excited as well. God answers prayer that we put out for others. God answers prayer for our children who are lost. God answers prayer for everything in His timing and in His will. Some maybe know, but He answers for resetting our prayer. So you guys can stretch because we're going to be ending on here with this one. Resetting our prayer brings the power of God into not only the individual's life, but the church. The Bible gives us so many examples of this power when people reset and they begin to pray and they begin to talk to God and, 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 and God's power is seen in that church. The, one, the first one is the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, All these were continually united, the word united in prayer, along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus Jesus and his brothers. They were united in prayer. When we're united in prayer and we're praying about things, God answers prayer. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. You see the power of God mentioned when people are praying. The second one, a crippled man was healed at the hour of prayer in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. And now the Bible says, and now Peter and John were going up together to the temple complex at the hour of prayer at three in the afternoon, certain hour, three in the afternoon. And a man who was lame from birth was carried there and placed every day at the temple gate called Beautiful. So he could beg from those entering the temple complex. When he had saw Peter and John about to enter the temple complex, he asked for help. Peter, along with John, looked at him and intently said, look at us. So he turned, turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver and I don't have gold, but what I have, I give. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. 
Then talking, talking, then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. So he jumped, stood up, and started to walk, and he entered the temple complex with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. The third is, the place was shaken when the church prayed. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says, when they prayed, the place that they were assembled was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. When we pray, we'll speak God's message with boldness in our communities. The message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, resurrected. The message that brings people to the feet of Jesus. Four, Peter was prayed out of jail. Now many of us here are in our own little jail cells. We're stuck and we're struggling. Because people put us in, in those jail cells because what they think about us. But we, as a church, can get together and pray and break out of that. For an example, they call us the frozen chosen. I'm part of that because I'm a member of this church. But we're not frozen. That's just the name they've given us. We can get together and warm it up and pray and break out into our communities Because Jesus Christ did what for us? He set us free. And we can freely go into our communities to impact the world for Jesus Christ. But it has to start with prayer. Fifth, missionaries were called and sent in the Bible. Acts chapter 13, verse 1, uh, 1, 2, and 3. I'll read verse 2. As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work I have called them to. Then after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, and they were sent off. We need to pray. I know there's some young people who may God may be tugging on their hearts this morning to be missionaries. We need to, as a church, pray for them so that we can send them out into our communities. Even talking about the final sermon that we have, we have to, I believe it's Win, Grow, Send on the Reset series. That's what we need to do. We need to win them for Jesus, grow them and disciple disciple them in-house, and then send them into a lost world so they can impact it for Jesus. Oswald Smith said, when we work, we work. When we pray, God works. So in saying that today, here's our challenge this morning. Are you ready? Our challenge today as a church would be one, go to God about everything. Before we do anything, we go to God. Two, pray daily and set some time to pray and don't let things interrupt that prayer time. Three, pray for others so that God can work on their lives. Pray always and throughout your day. And the final one, as Brother Mark comes up and we finish out. Understand when we pray, God works. When we pray, God works. God works when we pray. Isn't that awesome? I believe, folks, prayer is the key to victory. Amen? Amen. So as we finish out with our final song, we close in prayer. Just think about that. If you want to talk to God in prayer, you can.